Hi everyone, it is Kit, and welcome to another video by The Entropy System. I hope you all really like this look because I'm about to film like three to four videos back to backs because we want to have a nice backlog of content for you guys for when we go to Japan so you don't miss us. So this is going to show up quite a bit. <laughs> I'm actually filming this the day before Andrew arrives home, but for you guys it will be after Andrew arrives home. And if you follow us on Twitter or Instagram, you know what I'm talking about. But if you don't, Andrew just returned home from a six month deployment, which, oh my god, I am so happy that he's finally back. Uh. But in addition to deployments just sucking in general, uh, we have not ever lived on our own long term, like ever. Like I think three months was the top that we've ever lived by ourselves. Cause we went straight, you know, from having roommates to being in the army to being married. And so it was just like, pew, pew, pew. no alone time. <laughs> not that that's bad. Cause we're all very, very social. And so it's not like, like, oh no, we never got the chance to live on our own. But like, it kind of forced us into a situation that we were not ready. We, we weren't really prepared for it. We had to kind of change the way we did things. So this video is about how we adapted and changed and grew while Andrew was deployed and we were forced to fend for ourselves like little wild dogs. <laughs> so the first thing that happened was we dropped Andrew off at the airport and then we came home and we laid in bed all day and didn't do anything because we were sad and we missed him. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until the next day that Daniel was like, okay guys, like, for real though, we need, we need to do things. And so he got up and I think he just went like basic necessity shopping, like touched up on groceries and got like toilet paper or toothpaste or something just to like get us out of the house and keep us productive. And we slowly built up from there, but it took a hot minute for us to start keeping ourselves accountable on our own schedule. Like, I think it took two and a half months before we were on a regular schedule of wake up, go to the gym, come home, you know, like get ready for the day, clean, other than just waking up and being like, well, what are we gonna do today? I don't know. Let's sit on the couch and scroll mindlessly through the internet for six hours and then realize we lost track of time and decide it's too late to do anything productive and just sit on the internet again. Like, it's very, very easy to just drift into uh, laziness, <laughs> I guess, when you don't have anyone else keeping you accountable. At least it was for us. It was very, very easy for that to happen. I like keeping schedules. I like being like, okay, X, Y, Z, we are doing this. This is what we're doing. But I'm also arguably the most extroverted of the system and arguably the most dependent on having other people around me to be like happy and you know, in the way that a lot of introverts need to be absolutely alone most of the time, I am the extrovert that absolutely has to have people around me almost all of the time. And we were home alone a lot. When we weren't at home, we were at work. As a result of that, I wasn't out a ton in the last six months. When I was out, it was generally at work or if we were here and like something was time sensitive, like we super, super needed to get something done now, I would come out. But even then, if I was out too long home alone, I'd get like seriously depressed. I'd just be sad. I'd just be sad and my motivation would start ticking down because I was lonely and like the others would kind of have to force me back inside because I'd find myself getting into that like, well, why even do anything? No one's here. Like I'm all by myself. Nothing matters. Blah. So even I found myself getting into like sit on the couch and mope state. We did find ways to keep ourselves busy. You know, we had our job and we had YouTube and we tried to do like a couple freelance projects like painting miniatures and stuff to try to keep us like gaining more income and um, you know, cause we're saving up for Japan in August. So we were, the income was very like forward on our brain. So like that and just kind of staying busy. Cause you know, we went through a period at first, like if we don't have any downtime whatsoever and we always are having to be accountable to other people, then then we're great, right? <laughs> it's like, no, that is the opposite, but still a problem. Like 
having no time to just like not think about keeping other people happy being like okay I've got to paint now I've got to edit videos now because we were painting we were doing videos twice a week I was oh god we were doing something else too it was just constant like we need to work for other people all the time and not give ourselves a single break because if we do then we'll just be sad but then we were just busy and sad and then we lost motivation that way too <laughs> eventually we stopped doing all the freelance stuff uh and just started like being like, okay, well, what kind of hobbies can we do that will fill time, but are just for us and we can do on our own time? So, like, Kim Kim got way deeper into Pokemon. Um, she became a league leader, which is cool. Uh, she also really started getting into cosplay, which has been very rewarding for her. Wynn and Daniel both started playing um, a game called Kill Team, which is uh, like the little Warhammer miniatures game. But they started getting into that and reading the books and getting to like know the lore, which really helped them. Like, you know, and, and so they, they started building on this um, and and we were finally like almost halfway through the deployment able to say okay like we have things that we can fill our time with that make us happy that are productive that you know help us to be social because kill team you have to go meet and play other people so you know that was keeping us social we made time to see our friends like we started having lunch with Julie or dinner with Julie once a week which is great but in addition to outside stuff our inside balance started to change as well. So like, I became friends with Daniel, which is a topic for another video, <laughs> but we're actually really good buddies now and I kind of sort of look up to him just because of the way that he specifically was able to help me through the responses I specifically had to Andrew's deployment and just being alone and all the emotions and gross stuff that came up during that time for me. Uh, and with me being out less, Kim Kim was out much more. Um, and so her and Wynn kind of ran the show for a while. And now in the days coming up to Andrew being home, I've been inspired to be out more because I'm like, let's clean the apartment. Let's get everything ready for Andrew to be home. I have a purpose. I have a drive. Boom, boom, boom. And so like I've been out, you know, doing like responsible mom stuff, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we also had to gain coping mechanisms during this time because like nightmares, trauma nightmares mess us up like bad and so in the morning or in the middle of the night we wake up trauma nightmare we'd be like hey Andrew Andrew will you hold my hand so I can fall back asleep and he'd be like yeah like half asleep I don't even know if he woke up half the time but he would roll over hold her hand go back to sleep and be fine and feel comforted um, obviously that's not an option anymore so we had to figure out how to do that Ed and Oz are now like really we learned that they're very primed to um take on any you know any like internet unpleasantries and surprise surprise we learned that the best way to keep ourselves from getting overwhelmed by hate comments is deleting them and moving on with our lives without replying go figure right <laughs> but Ed Nas kind of guided us down that path and Andrew's just like I've been telling you to do this for like since you started the channel and we're like yeah but it's so much easier to fight because you've got emotions <laughs> you know but you know Ed and Oz were designed to be completely apathetic to that kind of stuff and so <laughs> to Andrew's frustration they were the ones that guided us to that conclusion. Uh, when we go to sleep at night we learned that singing a lullaby helps prevent nightmares. Uh, there was a lot of trial and error with this. Like so for a while, Kim Kim seemed to be immune to nightmares. So she'd be like the designated one to go to bed. Um, but then I guess that was a fluke or her magic gift wore off because eventually she started getting nightmares too. And we were like, well, crap. I'm pretty sure that we found a way to like connect to baby, the baby on the island. And like, I don't think the baby fronts, but we can like channel her like super peaceful sleep if we like cuddle up with a pillow and use like a pacifier as we're falling asleep. Like there's just this like very young, like the brain gets super simplified and like 
everything is just like sounds and emotions. There aren't like complete thoughts or words or even like clear pictures of anything. It's just like physical sensations and sounds. And that's the only thing that the brain can comprehend. And so all the stresses that we're thinking about just out the window and we just are able to fall asleep. So combining the two of those after really stressful days has over the last two months provided to be a good thing for us. Like I don't want to knock on one, don't want to jinx it, don't want to ruin it. Um, but you know, we found our own ways to combat nightmares. Um, and I actually, I want to pause and say, like, we have you guys to thank for the whole, like, maybe we can connect with the baby thing. Because someone was like, maybe the baby represents the need to, like, be peacefully asleep. And we were like, yeah. And then, like, we started thinking about that one night before bed. It was something that had never occurred to us. And that was the first night that we felt, like, very, like, young and small. And then all our thoughts kind of faded into fuzz. And then we fell asleep and had no nightmares. So... You guys are great. <laughs> you help us discover stuff about ourselves. Thank you. So uh, I guess in conclusion, there was a lot of there were a lot of internal changes um, and ways that we handle things and ways that we have grown. Uh, and it was definitely overall probably good for us to to gain that sort of like self-contained strength. You know that like we can if we need to we can depend on ourselves and we don't have to have external you know comfort all the time. But holy shit, I'm so glad that Andrew's coming home because I miss him so so much. Also, big exciting news. We have an Instagram. You guys have been asking since like day one and we finally got brave enough to do it. So hit us up. Now we have a Twitter at entropy underscore system and we have an Instagram, the entropy system, all one word. Hit us up, check us out. We'll try to post pretty regularly, like hopefully like once a day, twice a day, um, but we don't want to spam you guys. We don't know what like the proper etiquette for Instagram is. So if you guys could like give us tips on that, like, what goes on the feed, what goes in a story, like how often you should post without feeling like you're spamming your your followers or whatever. That'd be super great. We'd like the the, uh, the assistance. We also have really cool shirts. Check them out at our Teespring below. I designed all of them because I'm good at things. And that is all I can think of. So until next time, please remember that you are loved, you are valuable, and you are valid. Bye! Mwah! So basically, we're always learning about ourselves. Whoa, Leia just attacked my phone. Wait, what? Stop. <laughs> I've got like a little Evie that dangles off my phone and she just, it's sitting under the camera and she just like tackled it. Don't do that. <laughs>